Well, it's a question many of us have had over the past few months. Does the type of blood that I have make a difference when it comes to COVID-19? According to two independent studies out of Denmark and out of Vancouver, fewer people with type O blood experience severe symptoms of the virus. So for more on this, CTV science and technology specialist Dan Riskin joins us with another edition of This Week in Science. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for being here. We got two different studies. They're approaching this in kind of different ways. Um, what do the studies show in a nutshell? Break it down for us. Yeah, there's been a big question for a long time about what the effect of blood type might be. I mean, it, the thing about COVID-19 is it seems very much random in terms of who gets it and who, I mean, you, you get it, but once you've got it, how bad is it? And that's what seems so random. And, you know, we know that there's a correlation with age, but some people that are elderly don't get sick. And that's strange. And some people that are young get very sick. And we don't, don't understand exactly how that works. And blood type is something that really showed up with the early with SARS-1. It sounds like a terrible movie and a movie sequel. But when we talk about <laughs> SARS that happened 17 years ago, um, people with type A blood had a better uh, outcome than people that didn't have those A antigens in their, in their blood. And so people have been looking very carefully to see if blood type has an effect. And what these two studies show is that indeed there is an effect. The Denmark study shows that if you have type O blood, which is the most common blood type, then you are far less likely to get sick with the disease at all, to, to catch the disease. And the, the second study out of Denmark shows that which blood type you have has an effect on how long you'll be in the ICU and whether you need mechanical ventilation. And again, type O blood comes out ahead. So uh, if this is a, a weird quirk of the disease that people with type O blood aren't, you know, they're not immune by any stretch, but they seem to have a better outcome than people with other blood types. Yeah, and both studies have separate and different theories as to why that is. What is it about type O blood that makes it so special? Yeah, it's it's hard to know because it seems that, you know, when it comes to blood types, you're talking about antibodies and antigens in the blood. And the whole reason that you can't donate blood from a type B person to a type A person is because they have these these things in their blood, these type B antigens. And when those go into a body that it, 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 that doesn't recognize them, the body will attack them. And so type O means you don't have the A and you don't have the B, you've got nothing. And so the antigens don't, don't present and the antibodies don't attack. So somebody that has a type O blood type, the O kind of means not A, not B. Um, people that have type A blood are giving the A, Type P, people have type B blood are giving the B antigens. And of course, people with type AB blood are giving both of those. And so you've got the immune system involved. You've got these antigens. And how all of that comes together really is a black box right now. They don't understand. Clearly, the, uh, the antibodies and the immune system have a huge role to play in how you deal with this virus because it really comes down to the immune system itself. Uh, but the overreaction of the immune system seems to be an issue for a lot of people. And so it's quite possible that blood type is playing into that. But they still don't know. I mean, the fact that they're coming up with these different elaborate medical hypotheses for what exactly is causing this just shows that we don't really understand what the mechanism is. And I should say, the effect is relatively minor. I mean, the decrease in uh, the likelihood that you'll get the disease if you have type O blood is on the order of about 13%. So this is not, you know, some miracle change that's, you know, going to drop the numbers or something like that. This is, this is a pretty subtle effect, but it does hopefully point to how the disease is progressing and what makes it so deadly for some people and not for others. Well, let's leave it on that positive note today. Dan Riskin, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.